Hi, my name is Paul and welcome to the Learning Net. Okay, in this video I'm quickly going to show you how to set up DHCP on one of your routers. You might ask, well, why do I need to do that? Surely my servers do that for me, my Windows server runs DHCP, my Linux servers run DHCP. Why would I want to do it on a router? Well, in most cases, you're probably right, but if you think about it, your branch offices still need to come across the network to query that DHCP server for an IP address. Okay, so it might be in some instances it might be worthwhile setting up your branches um, with a DHCP server on the router itself. Okay, so here we go. I need to go into configuration mode, obviously, because that's where we configure 99% of all our commands on our router. What do I need to do? Well, I need to turn on the DHCP service, just like I would on a Windows machine. DHCP service, and that's the command. No, it's not. Would help if I spelled it correctly. <laughs> DHCP service. There we go. I've now turned on the service, so now all I need to do is specify a pool of addresses for this service. So the command for this is IP because it is an IP function. DH, I've just done it again, DHCP. <laughs> and I just specify, or I type the word pool, and here I can now specify anything I like. I just need to type in a word, any word. Okay, now it would make sense at this point to make this word have some relevance to your network. So I'm going to type in net dash, and in this instance, I'm for example, it could be a branch. Um, in Manchester, it could be a local VLAN. I'm just going to say VLAN. Why not? VLAN dash uh, B. If I wanted to do that, I could also just say net and type in an address 192.168.1.0 uh, if I wanted to. It doesn't really matter what I type is what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to say net A, finish and done with. Okay, the configuration mode now changes from the global config as you can see there, conf, into the DHCP config. I'm now inside this particular pool, and this is where I set the parameters for the pool. And the first parameter that I'm going to set, doesn't really matter what order you do it in, the first parameter I'm going to set is the network that this belongs to, and it belongs to 192.168.1.0 slash 24. This is one of the very few times you can, on a router, use the slash notation instead of the entire subnet mask. I don't have to type in 255.255.255.255.0 for this class C address. Right, so I've now allocated the network I want this to be on. Um, what is um, What do computers need um, in terms of their IP address um, settings on their computers? So we give them an IP address and a mask, that's great. What else do they need? Well, if they want to leave the network, they need a default gateway address. So we need to type in the default gateway address. Now on a router, it's not default gateway, it's actually default router. This will hand out a default gateway to your PC, 192.168, and in this instance it is this router's address, which happens to be 254. That is the default router's address. What else do I need? What else does your PC generally need? Well, the number of parameters I can add here, there's quite a few. I can give it um, a NetBIOS name, a Wins name, a DNS, um, all the things your PC would typically need to access the internet and access other services on its own network. So we're not going to go into all of those right now. I'm just going to give one other option which I think is quite important and that is the least time. How long do I want you to have this IP address? Now some people say, well, does it really matter? Just take it. Well, it doesn't really because we are using private addressing and we normally do have enough addresses. But it makes sense that if somebody has a laptop and if they're going to leave the building for a week, there's no point in them leaving the building with that IP address. So if I set the lease to a day, that means the next time they come back, they'll have to get a new address. Simple as that. It saves some of my address space. So I'm just going to give you a lease of one day. Okay, and then the, the only other thing I really need for this pool, um, really, is DNS. And as I say, I'm not going to bother with DNS right now. Um, if I put DNS in, that will allow you access to the internet. Okay, so I can exit out of there. And once I exit out of here, this is where it gets a bit strange. Think about what I've just done. I've set a range of addresses, and I've allowed you to go and get one. Okay, I've also specified what the default gateway is. So, let's say, you know, the first couple of hundred users go on the network, they get an IP address, great. What happens next? Eventually, as I start running out of IP addresses, somebody's going to get that default gateway address that I just set up, that dot, uh, 1.254 address. So, I need to exclude that address from the um, DHCP offering that I'm going to give you. Now for some reason we don't actually do that inside the pool. We go on to the global configuration mode where I am now. I've come out of the pool mode and I just type in IP, again it's an IP function, DHCP, DHCP excluded address 
and I can now type in a low range of addresses that I want to exclude 192.168.1.200 let's say that's where my servers might start from and I want to have a range of addresses that I do not want to hand out with a D via DHCP so the high range is 192.168.1.254 which happens to be my router obviously I don't want to give that out either otherwise there will be an address conflict on my network okay so that excludes those ranges from being allocated to any DHCP user that really is all that I need to do to set up DHCP now hopefully um, I should see my PC um, in the DHCP pool I do that by show IP uh, oops, show show IP DHCP bindings oh binding oh nothing there so I just need to get my IP, my uh, PC I'm gonna guess it's got a 169 address no that's my old static so we're just going to release that and the easiest way to do that would be from the window that I'm in now but I like using the command window and just typing in IP config space forward slash release don't know what it is me today I can't seem to type must be this keyboard I've released that address yeah, I now have a 000 address. I'm now going to ask it, can you do me a favor? Can you go get me a new one, please? And I just say renew. So now it is going to query the DHCP server, and hopefully I get an address from it, otherwise, we have a problem. Okay, I'm on. And there we go. I've just been allocated the very first address in that pool. It's given me 1.1, it's given me a submit mask, and it's also given me my default gateway. If I set the other parameters, it would also tell me, uh, for example, if I go IP config forward slash um, all, it will show me all the parameters. It's telling me how long the lease is for. When I obtained the lease, I got it on the 7th of March um, at uh, 2055 and it expires on the 8th of March at 2055. That's the one day. Okay. And I can also check the DHCP server itself, the router itself, which I showed you earlier. Show IP DHCP binding and it's showing me that it's allocated at about one address to this MAC address which happens to be the MAC address of my PC. If I look there I can see there's my MAC address um, the last four digits are E308 if I go back and have a look at that um, oh what happened there there we go D308 that's my address and that's how you set up DHCP on a router. I thank you for your time and sincerely hope you choose a learning net as your IT training center of choice. Thank you